feel really aroused all of a sudden. <laughs> that is Sean Burke. <laughs> Look, and that's Susie Ruffle. They're embarking on a great adventure. They're travelling across my beautiful Ireland, searching for new stand-up comedy material. Uh, Can I kneel, on this? No. The gig is booked. All the tickets are sold, but they've written no jokes. None whatsoever. How am I getting away with this? <laughs> so they're on a road trip looking for pots of comedy gold. <laughs> Apparently, they're both quite funny. Let's see, shall we? Welcome to Stand Up Road Trip. Well, well, well. Here we are. Susie, Hello. how are you? Oh, oh, we go. oh, no, we didn't know what to do. Oh, what a terrible oh, start to our friendship. On camera as well. This Here place we is beautiful. Oh, what a day for it. OK, we have a gig. We've got a van. What could go wrong? Oh, almost everything. No. OK, let's go. We're both stand-ups. We're both stand-up comedians. Did you know that we were doing a gig at the end of the week and we had to do material from our adventure? I had an idea that there was a gig, but I didn't know there was going to be such pressure on covering the trip. No stress. We have to mine this for experiences and turn that into jokes. But it should be fine. It'll be fine. We've got four, three... Four days. Three days. days three days. ..to come up with some polished material. And, uh, and then I mean, we've got a gig in Limerick. We've got a gig Do in they Limerick. like Limericks there? Is that where They're that word is from? That's why it's named that way. <laughs> yeah, quick fact for the less hard of thinking, that's obviously not true. Oh! I recognise this. What is that? You know this? Yeah, I've been here before. OK, what, where, what is this? Newgrange. Newgrange is a globally significant Stone Age monument situated in County Meath. Designated a World Heritage Site, it is the jewel in the crown of Ireland's ancient east. And they're here looking for jokes. Hey, Claire. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. So, Newgrange has been dated to around 3200 BC, and it was protected by superstition. Uh -huh. So what kind of monument is it? Like, what's it for? It's what we call a passage tomb. So there's all bodies in there? They're not there anymore. Oh. Where are they? So it's only small pieces of burnt bone that were found. They cremated the bodies before they brought them inside, because we think these were built as tombs for a very uh, high elite. Is this sort of like the way they use the pyramids? Maybe? Exactly. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. But right. it's older. Yeah. Except it's older. Very well done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That. And it's also older than Stonehenge, which is probably one of the most famous oh, monuments. Wow. Yeah. Take that. Isn't <laughs> Ireland great? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ireland is great. <laughs> it is. Yeah. These were built by what we would call teenagers now. Yeah. Mm. Teenagers today, yeah. they'd be on their phones. Yeah. No phones. No, they're not building any burial chambers no, at all. <laughs> is it creepy inside? No. 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 It's cold. Because it's stone. Mm. Like on a wall. Can I lean on this? No. Okay. <laughs> Can we go inside? Yeah. Yeah? Can we? Um, yeah, nice. absolutely. Right. But right. unfortunately, the camera crew can't. Oh. oh. Hard luck. I'm going to go and see some magic. Oh, wow. Look at the floor. <laughs> is that what I think it is? In terms of material for me, I'm fascinated by the fact that the whole thing is so reliant on sunlight hitting a certain point at a very specific time. In Ireland! In Ireland! <laughs> Did you hear what she said about the... Uh, she was saying about how people thought it was like a monument to fertility? Yes, yeah. Uh, it's only a matter of time with these old things. There's some nod to fertility. They all, everything comes back to banging. <laughs> Makes the world go around. Well, that is one way to sum up 5,000 years of history. The next destination for our comedians to seek inspiration is the charming coastal town of Carlingford on the Cooley Peninsula. What a charming little town. Oh, no, this is lovely. Looks like we're entering Carlingford. Did you say that because you just saw the sign? I did just read that sign. OK. Um, that looks like a castle. Yeah, Carlingford that's nice. Castle, I presume. I assume it is Carlingford Castle. Do you know anything? Yeah, well, clearly it was half melted by dragons in the 14th century. Do they yeah. still come? Yeah, I mean, dragon slayings are through the roof 
and uh, they go through a lot of sheep. But <laughs> <laughs> other than that, you know, it's all good. You so. are becoming less and less convincing as my tour guide every minute that passes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> It feels like a bit of a treat, doesn't it? Yeah, I think like, so. This is work. Um, I know. How am I getting away with this? I don't know how you're getting away with it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, but our next destination is just up ahead. It smells like the sea. Yeah, it really stings the nostrils. It's fresh, though. I love that smell. Carlingford Oyster Company. Do you like oysters? I'm open to the idea of oysters. Okay. I wouldn't You're say. oyster curious. <laughs> I'm oyster curious yeah. is the, the turn of phrase, yeah. Okay. You? Oh, hate them, think they're really weird. Yeah. Actually, if anything, find them quite creepy. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Hello, yes. I'm Susie. Hi, Susie. I am Sean. Sean, nice to meet you. I'm actually going out on the farm now, and if you want to join me, you can come and see what happens. I have got no idea. I'm curious. What any of that means. Yeah. But I'm up for it. I've got a few pairs of dungarees. None quite not, like not, this. Not bright yellow like this. No, no, it's good. Just wipe my nose with a fishy glove. This line of uh, oysters here is uh, full-grown oysters. May I? Oh, grow up. Sorry, I refuse to. <laughs> OK, so this is the bag of oysters. Yes. And uh, it's about, about 10 kilos now, which is kind of the ideal weight for, for harvesting the land. How did you end up doing this? My dad started the farm wow. in the 70s. But it's 50 years next year he wow. started. Why in this part of Ireland? Why here? Well, that's because where we lived. <laughs> it's as complicated as that. Right, okay. um, but wow, like... what a story! <laughs> it was convenient. But there's, there's about 200 oyster farms in Ireland. So okay. at this stage, like nearly every bay in Ireland, if you walked out on it, you'd probably see an oyster farm. Right. And they'll all taste a little bit different. A little bit like wines will taste different from different vineyards. Well, I love wine. There you go. So, you, so maybe I'll maybe go you like oysters. Coasters. Yeah. Right. Okay. Shall oyster we? Try yeah. it. I have yeah. I have some oysters here. All right. Oysters. Now, Kian, if I'm to try one of these, are you going to be very offended if I um, pull some, like, I might throw up faces? I'll just be impressed if you try an oyster. Would you cover it in something for me? Do you like hot stuff? Yeah, or... I like hot stuff. Yeah. OK, try not. One, two. I, I'm actually very nervous, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed yeah, that you're still the only one to do this. So, oh. sip the water first. It's quite the flavour, isn't it? Mm. Salty. <laughs> it's just not for me. I appreciate that loads of people like them and they're a real delicacy, but unfortunately, I have a very common tongue. OK, one for you, one for me, sir. Mm -hmm. Sean. Cheers. Oh, yeah. I feel really aroused all of a sudden. <laughs> I have had a lovely day on the east coast of Ireland. It's been lovely. I've learned a bit about oysters. I'm not sure I needed to know about it, but you know, it's nice to have a little bit of information, isn't it? I hope they don't do anything aphrodisiacal to him. I felt immediately frisky after just one oyster, and then I had two more. Uh, so now we're just getting into the early evening, so I think it's going to be a good night. I don't know where I'll end up. I'll follow my crotch. It turns out that Sean's frisky crotch nav leads straight to a comedy club in Limerick. It's time for the gig. Can Sean and Susie turn their adventures on the East Coast into some actual stand-up comedy? Do they possess the intellect to entertain these good people in the homeland of James Joyce and Samuel Beckett? Are they capable of making these lovely people laugh? I'm not convinced. But let's find out. Everybody for Susie Ruffo! Hello. Hi. Oh, that's so kind of you. Thank you. This is my first time ever gigging in Limerick. And... 
every single person that we've met have been so wonderful and lovely. We went to Newgrange. Have you been to Newgrange? Yeah, a few nodding people. Yes, we've been to Newgrange. Well done. It's, a, it's very old. Oh, you've got a lot of old shit. And you love your old shit. Here. Loads of old shit. She couldn't wait to tell me it was 500 years older than the pyramids. It was well old. Well old. It's 500 years older than the pyramids. And it was great. It was great. We were walking around it and we were learning all the different things. And I, and I said, I said uh, you know, what was it made for? Why did they create it? And she said, we don't know. We've got no idea. And I thought, no, of course you wouldn't. You know, you didn't keep diaries back then, did they? Just like, dear diary. <sighs> Life's tough. No teeth. YOLO. You know, I don't think that they're having that. But she said, what do you, I said, what did you think it was for? And she said, well, we found a massive phallic stone in the middle. That means penis. Massive phallic stone in the middle of it. And so they think that it might have been for fertility. So it's either for fertility reasons to pray for more babies or it was the medieval version of just drawing a cock and balls on something. So it's hard to know. <laughs> Thanks for coming out with us tonight, folks. Uh, myself and Susie, we've been traveling all over Ireland the past week or so, uh, seeing the sights. I've been showing her around. We've been having loads of cool experiences. And you know, I think we make an interesting duo as well. You know, because on the one hand, you've got somebody who doesn't know anything about Ireland, doesn't speak any Irish, has never visited outside of Dublin. And on the other hand, you have an English person. <laughs> Susie mentioned we went to Newgrange. Newgrange, spectacular. Uh, and honestly, all jokes aside, something I think we should be really proud of. Uh, older than the pyramids, older than Stonehenge. Uh, it's not a competition, but... Championi, championi. We'll take what we can get. It's most famous for what happens during the winter solstice, when uh, during a very specific time of day, during a very specific time of year, uh, sunlight penetrates the roof box and slowly illuminates the passage on just the few shortest days of the year for just 17 minutes. And for a monument that presumably took generations of endless hard labor and perseverance to make is a lot of reliance on there being sunlight in Ireland. <laughs> y you couldn't have built a monument that was activated by rain, you know? <laughs> Fair play to them, mate. They pulled it off. <laughs> Folks, I've been Sean Burke. You've been very nice. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Well, the audience loved it, and credit where credit is due. I'd like to say well done to you, my beautiful Ireland. Ah, what a day. A great day. Ready for bed? You bet. You got everything? Yeah, I think so. You got some water? Yep, you got your teddy? Yeah. Okay. Night night. Night. Oh. Uh, no, Sean! Susie? Obviously not sleeping in a van. Susie? Susie?